Well hey guys, today's experiment is to play with a single-ended solid-state amplifier stage. These were used in the early days of solid-state because of the simplicity, but they were power-hungry. For example, in an AM car radio, this would be biased at around 500 milliamps, so it would constantly draw 6 watts even though it's just sitting there idle. I mean, in other words, if the volume was turned all the way down, it would still draw 6 watts. That's because it's a Class A design, conducting heavily. And doing that, you just need one element, active element, to drive the load. Now, of course, it's not push-pull Class A, but it's still class A even though it's just one element here. And because we can't put DC into a coil, the speaker coil, we're going to use a transformer and it'll just conduct the bias current on through and any changes in the collector current up and down will pass that AC on through to the speaker. Now I imagine this thing's going to be a pain in the butt because, you know, it's there's not any real feedback, and uh, you know, it's, when it warms up, it's going to conduct more. You know how transistors are. So I am putting a one ohm resistor here. Hopefully that'll help with that issue, though it does reduce gain a little bit. It's called an emitter degeneration resistor. It actually does give some feedback the way it works. So it should reduce the distortion a bit and hopefully uh, reduce the thermal runaway problem. And we'll have to figure out how much signal we need. You know, it's not going to have a lot of gain just being one power transistor. And, uh, you know, we might have to use a little bit more signal here you know we'll see so I pulled this 3055 transistor out of the parts drawer put it on a heat sink I'm gonna bias it at 500 milliamps I couldn't find a 1 ohm resistor I'll see how this 0.47 goes if it's not working I can put another one in series. Okay, I have to figure out what the value of this resistor is. I don't know what the gain of this transistor is. I'm not going to even bother to look it up. I'm just going to guess that it has about a gain, current gain of 100. You know, it's a power resistor or a transistor with uh, 500 milliamps. The more current, the lower the gain because that's just the way the transistors operate. So let's see here. If I have 0.5, half an amp, and my gain is 100 divided by 100. So I need to put a bias current of uh, 5 milliamps to get that to conduct at half an amp. Okay. And there's a little bit of loss, voltage loss through that diode junction, the base to emitter junction there. Drops about 0.7 volts. A little bit lost here. I'm just going to say 11 volts. And we, we have volts and we have current, so we should be able to find a resistance, right? Simple Ohm's Law stuff here. So voltage is always on top. 11 volts divided by 0 0.005. Looks like I need a 200 or a 2200K. Oh God, I can't talk. 2.2K resistor. All right, so I'll hook up the circuit and take a look at it here. Okay, I dug through my parts and found a 2.2k resistor there's the emitter resistor here the big blue one and I'm monitoring current going through that transistor 
and I'll engage the power supply. Well, it appears this transistor has more than 100 times gain because, well, <laughs> that's obvious. But at least the gain is steady. It's act or the uh, thermal stability is. Wow, well, it's getting hot already. It's actually dropping. Now that's interesting. Thermal stability. What would happen if I remove that resistor altogether? Well, we'll look at that in a minute. I'm going to try another resistor. Well, I increased that resistor to 4.7K, and we're getting well, a little bit high, but good enough, I think. It'll work. In fact, I can turn the voltage down on this power supply. That'll mean less dissipation across that transistor. Things going to get hotter than anything anyway. About 500 milliamps, and uh, I'm running about 9 volts now. Okay, let's see what happens if I bypass that resistor in there. It's going to change my current, I know that. Right there. Nope, didn't really change it. Am I got that plugged in right? Yep, we are bypassing that resistor. Let's change the current a bit. But the thermal stability seems to be no problem in the circuit. Okay. Well, let me uh, grab a transformer, speaker, and looks like I need a uh, capacitor for the input, and of course a signal source. See what happens here. Okay, I have it hooked up here. Just using this uh, transformer. It's one of those 70 volt line transformers. I'm only using the uh, the speaker side. You see it has the taps for common 4, 8, and 16 ohms. Seems to work best when I go from common to 16 ohm. I even have the speaker connected to the same tap so it's not really acting as a transformer. It's just acting as a inductor. So you know it's just a two connections and the speaker is also connected at that same point so it's kind of like a current source it just it lets the DC current pass through unabated and because the MP or the uh, DC resistance of that coil is so low there's not a lot of DC going into the speaker which you don't want I mean there's some there's uh, 337 millivolts that's not ideal but Oops, my connection just came off. You can hear when I connect it, there's a little bit of noise. It's a small amount of offset, but it's not going to push the cone out too much to cause an issue with the sound or anything. So, uh, let's see here. I'm going to move this. Oh, there, all the clips come off. Uh, I forgot what I was saying but um, yeah so DC goes through that unabated so you get that 500 milliamp bias current but AC can't really go through this so it goes it shunts around through the speaker I mean uh, yeah the currents changing but you know these resist changes in current so it goes through the speaker so it it's kind of a Perfect marriage there, I guess you could say. Okay, so let's see what it sounds like.
thought I would hear more distortion, but it sounds pretty clean. I'm sure there's some. It's just, you know, they say you can't hear, with certain types of music, you can't hear the distortion when it's under a certain amount. But yeah, it does sound pretty clean. But let's see what the scope has to say about that. Okay, I put a non-inductive 8 ohm load. I don't want to hear a, a speaker screaming in my ear at 1 kilohertz. And there's the waveform. I notice with the scope, if I set the waveform like that, I can see the uh, spectrum a little bit better. It separates the harmonics. But it's hard to see, so let me turn that off. So yeah, it does have harmonics, but hey, it's all low order. And I guess uh, you audio gurus, at least some of you like those low order harmonics, just like a single ended tube amp, same thing. And as you turn the signal down, it uh, drops quite a bit. There are some little blips there. And that's uh, higher order harmonics, but they're very low. So I turn this thing up. And it, typical, the more signal from these things, the higher the distortion it gets until it finally, we're probably into clipping. Oh yeah, let's see. It's, yeah, it's clipping on the bottom. Let's turn that down a little bit. Right about there is as clean as it gets. Let me turn that up again. Turn that off. Well, this, the fundamental goes way off screen, but you can see that. I guess that would be the um, first even harmonic. And the odds really low. And turn it down. I measured that I'm getting half a watt of power. We're only running at around 9 volts and we're getting half a watt into 8 ohms. <laughs> That's surprising. Uh, running at 2.18. Let me check that again. 2.18 squared divided by 8. About 0.6 watts. That's not bad at all. I'm, quite, I'm kind of surprised. Now some weird things can happen. When you put that much current through a transformer that's not really meant to conduct any direct current. You know, they may not have any gap. You get core saturation but I would think that would show a lot more distortion so you might get some weird effects there I'm gonna try another frequency see what happens this is at a hundred Hertz you can see there's a lot more distortion let's turn that down so here's the fundamental and eh, it's not terrible looking at the fundamental but it is significant Turn that back up to where it was. And next I'll take a look at 10 kilohertz. There's 10 kilohertz. Turn that down so you can see the peak of the fundamental right here. And it's still a pretty small blip. Turn that up again. I think it was there. See as we lower the level it does drop down significantly like I say the higher the amplitude the more distortion you get from these simple amplifiers but it uh, works fairly impressively well I think I'll end this here and uh, look at a capacitor coupled output maybe in another video because this one's getting pretty long. Thanks for watching.